Hello from downtown Honolulu, from the center of the Pacific, the Pioneer Plaza. We're here at the Think Tech Studios. I just want to take a moment to say Merry Christmas to all the Think Tech people. It's quite a vibrant community of hosts and guests and volunteers and, and technical people and behind the scenes here who make this happen continuously. And just a word of recognition and gratitude for all you do to make communications possible. I'm Michael North, and I'm a, the guest host for this episode of The Art of Thinking Smart. I'm filling in for David Chang. And in this program, we attempt to capture some of the applied knowledge and wisdom of experienced people in the business and economic and cultural and technical worlds to pass that information, those ideas, on to others so that we can think smart, not just think fast or have a lot of information or go from place to place quickly, but we think so we can go around corners efficiently so that we can make the decisions that will produce good results. And that's quite an art and it takes a little time. And sometimes there's a good deal of trial and error. Sometimes there's mentorship and education that takes a part. Sometimes professional standards and so on help us. And we have a person here today who has an unusual range of experience in China, in mainland China, and in America. This is uh, Xiaofang Zhou, our guest for today. And Xiaofang's life is divided roughly into two parts. The first half spent in China as a student and a young professional and working in various industries in China, a university graduate. And then coming to America and starting from, from scratch, starting from a suitcase and building into uh, several successful businesses, import, export, and retail, and so on. And she's also done a lot of work in the field of cross-border communications between America and China, because she has the language and the understanding on both sides and applied experience on both sides. Aloha, which is I'm Carl Campania. I hope you please so visit. Xiaofang, when she looks at the international scene these days, she sees both opportunities and challenges, has an unusually clear view. And she's here after six months solid working in Beijing. And you came here for a series of events called Deep Love. Mm -hmm which is an unusual title. Can you tell us a little bit about Deep Love and what that program was? It was just completed two days ago, so it's very fresh. Yeah. Aloha. It's so good to be back home in beautiful Hawaii. Um, I was uh, uh, living in China, Beijing, for the last, for the last six months. And uh, during the last six months, I was uh, traveling uh, also around uh, China. And uh, one of the city I always go visit is Huayan. Mm. Huayan is uh, a small town in Jiangsu province. It's almost like a center um, China. Nearby uh, Suzhou, everybody heard about Suzhou, Shanghai. But Huayan is a small town, but it's also uh, lived a great peacemaker is small by Chinese standards, I think about three, four million people. Yes. Yes. Um, <laughs> Much bigger than Honolulu, but yeah. by Chinese standards, it's a small sub-regional capital. Right. Beautiful place. Yes. And, um, and Zhou Enlai, the, the first premier of China, mm. who was born in that city, Huayan. So um, I often visit his, his home, his mm. family there. Um, What's the, uh, the time frame for Zhou Enlai? When was he born? And well, life? Zhou Enlai, uh, the former premier of China, mm -hmm. who was born in Huayan in, uh, on March 5th, 1898. Mm. So it's uh, 118 years ago. Mm. 
118 years. So he lived through war and revolution and wow. Yes. The whole 20th century was, yes. that was a very challenging time for China. It is. And lots of people, of course, Chinese people, um, she, he is a beloved premier and he's uh, people's premier. Mm. Um, the world maybe know Zhou Wenlai is a politician, uh, statement, uh, the government premier. Mm. But they didn't know um, more. Uh, they didn't know much about who the Zhou Enlai, the person, mm. as a father, as an uncle, as a, as a people's. And as a husband. Yes. Yeah. And uh, when I, um, the last visit, I, it was in June, mm. early June, and I visited the, uh, the Zhou Enlai resident where he uh, was born. Mm. And the director in, at the uh, Zhou Enlai uh, resident, they showed me a beautiful new exhibi uh, ex exhibition mm. uh, in their courtyard. And that's called Deep Love, Kang Li Qing Shen. It talks about, you know, in China, everybody know Zhou Enlai, but actually they also know he has a beautiful wife, but not only um, as a couple for 60 years, mm. but they also, you know, fought together, mm. shoulder by shoulder, mm. and they've been, they've been through the uh, long march, mm. and they went through the new China, mm. and her name is Deng Ying Chao. Mm. And I think in the Western, uh, not so many people uh, know about his wife, mm. Deng Ying Chao, and they met when they were teenagers, and Deng Ying Chao was a speaker, was a leader, was a woman, mm. pioneer for the, uh, for, for New China. Mm. And this That was a time when women's rights was not a common subject in right, China. Right, right. Because women couldn't own property or yes. have a job or... Right. Yeah. So she was the, uh, the pioneer for leading the woman uh, movement. Mm. And... Uh, um, so this exhibition is about Zhou Enlai and Deng Ying Chao, their mm. life, their youth, and their revolution, their whole life. Mm. So when I saw, it's about a 38 panel, mm. and they asked me, we have shown this in China, all mm. over China, but we've never been to Hawaii, we've never been to uh, abroad. Mm. Can you help us to mm. take this exhibition? Wow. So that have other people, the Western Americans, mm. uh, know Zhou Enlai and Deng Ying Chao because through their stories, they can understand the past China, the new China, mm. and the China today mm. because they represent the spirit, mm. the best spirit of the Chinese nation. Mm. So. We're talking about the art of thinking smart here. Mm -hmm. um, Zhou Enlai was a very intelligent person, mm -hmm. and he must have developed some principles, some ideas for thinking smart in his long career mm -hmm. um, to survive and to guide China through those treacherous waters. When you think of Zhou Enlai, what's the number one lesson that we here now in the 21st century could learn from from Zhou Enlai, what can he what can he teach us? Respect. Mm. Um, Zhou Enlai is uh, very uh, respected by Chinese people, the government people, uh, business people, young people, older people, and he's uh, still memorized, uh, remembered, uh, still today. Mm. Um, the strong. You know, the word is respect, mm -hmm. because she, he respect people, mm -hmm. not just the people um, for the China, mm -hmm. but people from uh, around the world, Africa, America, mm -hmm. Europe. So could you say you give respect and you receive respect? Yes. And the two are, which, is, which comes first? Do you have to give it or do you have to ask for it? I think... The first is to um, giving, mm. yeah. And um, giving is a receiving mm. because.
because when you give, let's say we, I have a gift, I have to hand it to you. Mm -hmm. So my hand is out. Mm -hmm. And that is the same time as a receiving as well, while here's, I'm giving. Here's the test, and mm -hmm. it's for all of us to pass this test. Sometimes we give respect, but despite that, mm -hmm. other people don't hear, they don't listen, they right. don't, and they even disrespect mm -hmm. when we give. So what is the right response when we give and then we do not receive? Mm -hmm. what, what should we do? Give respect with understanding. Mm. There's a different level of understanding. Mm. Um, I'm, t I'm talking about the deeper understanding, mm. the culture, the person, the, the history, the, uh, the gesture. Mm. There's a lots of a misunderstanding. Mm. Yeah. And uh, if you have a misunder um, misunderstanding each other, then there's, there has, you know, that's the first, mm. I think it's the first foundation. But respect comes with a human, all human being mm. will love that mm. for the respect. So without I knowing you or judging where you're from, but mm. we showing our respect to yeah. one another, like mm. uh, aloha. Yeah. You know, whether you know them, they, Hawaii is a perfect place. Yeah. People come here, they can all feel the warmth mm. of aloha. Is it and different that, from other places in that way? Very different. Mm. Um, the aloha, when I, you know, first come to Hawaii, and that word is a resin, it's just a seeded mm. into my being. Mm. And it's not just a word, it's, it's the meaning, it's the gesture, it's understanding, it is mm. feeling connected. So you were uh, hosting a number of people from China here over the past week. Yes. And some of them very high level delegation from mm -hmm. the government. Yes. Did, did they feel aloha? Did, was that connected somehow? Yes. Really? I never see them the biggest smile oh. when they first arrive here. Of course, the, the warms, China is, uh, Beijing is very cold. Mm. It's below zero. Hawaii, the, the, you know, the warmth and the blue sky and mm. clouds, white, white cloud and green tree and flowers and mountain, mm. ocean. And they feel very welcome, very, you know, um, like hugged by the nature. Mm -hmm. And then there's the people from Hawaii and everybody have a big smile and they have a flower shirt. Mm. Uh, so it's a very different when you come in, you feel welcome, that you feel you are in the nature, you are connected with people without barrier, mm. with one word of aloha. And wow. uh, yeah, they, they... And this was an event that was a, it was a, an official event at the Hawaii State Capitol. Yes. Right? And this delegation was officially welcomed by uh, Speaker of the House, former Speaker of the House, Calvin Say, and by current Speaker of the House, Joe Suki, and yes. other representatives, and yes. the Attorney General yeah. of the state came. Yeah. So did those people connect with their friends from across the ocean, and is that part of your intent and mission? Yes, everybody feels so like a home, like mm. the words ohana. Because in China, actually, lots of people come to me and saying, you know, Hawaiian cultural, is similar to Chinese cultural. Mm. They're very friendly, very home style. Mm. And uh, there's politician, there's a businessman, there's, uh, you know, ordinary people, scholars. But when we come together, it's like a melting pot. There's no difference. It's everybody is like a brother and sister, like a family. So they really feel home and they felt very special. We're going to take a brief break and be okay. back in just one minute. Aloha, I'm Carl Campagna. I hope you please visit us this summer. It's a wonderful summer. It's actually a cooler summer than we're used to. But I hope that you come back and visit us and watch our show, Education, Movers, Shakers, and Reformers, here on Think Tech Hawaii. It's at noon every Wednesday. See you then. Feliz Navidad! Feliz Navidad! Merry Christmas, everybody! Feliz Navidad! Prospero año y felicidad!
I want to wish you a Merry Christmas. I want to wish you a Merry Christmas. I want to wish you a Merry Christmas. Hello and aloha. My name is Raya Salter and I am the host of Power Up Hawaii, where Hawaii comes together to figure out how we're going to work towards a clean and renewable energy future. We have exciting conversations with all kinds of stakeholders, everyone who needs to come together to talk about renewable energy, be they engineers, advocates, lawyers, utility executives, musicians or artists, to see how we can come together to make a renewable future, Tuesdays at 1 p.m. Welcome back to The Art of Thinking Smart. Here we are with Xiaofang Zhou from the Asia Pacific Group. Now, Asia Pacific Group, Xiaofang, mm -hmm. what is Asia Pacific Group? What are you doing? How and why? What's it about? Well, Asia Pacific Group was um, originally was an Asia Pacific uh, net group, uh, network. network foundation. Yeah, I remember. It's a nonprofit organization, and we have a senior run. Uh, founded this uh, program mm. uh, is Roger Epstein. He was the uh, and then Mark Schlaff and mm. other lawyers in Hawaii, Honolulu, and they have been working with uh, Shanghai, Suzhou, Beijing, uh, the bar mm. uh, for many many years, and uh, especially uh, Roger Epstein went to China and uh, giving uh, presentation on tax law, trustee, insurance mm -hmm. uh, for those uh, Chinese investors uh, in the law, at the law firm because they have a lot of uh, clients. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but they're coming. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're coming and they're buying homes. They, they, they become our neighbors and uh, they buy businesses. Mm -hmm. um, but before they come, uh, they, don't, they don't really have the uh, uh, full information on the law, especially tax law, because the mm. U.S. Uh, tax law is for is international, global, mm. and they most of the investor they have a business in China, and uh, to serve this uh, people already here, mm. and the people are planning to come in here, and for the future, uh, we actually we decided to uh, have a, uh, a business group that specifically helping those people. Mm. Um, so this, uh, this June, uh, I was in China, open uh, office for the Asia Pacific Group, mm. and working directly with uh, all this uh, law firm mm. and the business organizations and mm. uh, uh, partial government and partial uh, private uh, entities. Mm. So that's what, you know, we, we do a presentation, we uh, you, you were there, Roger was there, mm. and we have uh, uh, partner Tobin, mm. uh, Butcher. Mm -hmm. um, so we were there, there also to build relationship because it is very difficult to do business across country. Mm. It's, it's difficult, there's uh, you know, obstacles in, in your own country. Mm. Um, so there, there's a lot, not just uh, law or investment, there's uh, cultural differences, mm -hmm. there's a language barrier, and uh, there's the environment, everything, mm -hmm. protocol, mm -hmm. politics, mm -hmm. everything is uh, different. So our group, uh, the Asia Pacific group, uh, is focused on the develop for eight principles. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in spite of all the businesses we, um, helping the Chinese people actually to blend it in to the culture of mm. the U.S. So for them to really feel this is home because of the really, uh, building. Teach them the art of thinking smart. Yes. In America. Yeah. And so you said something earlier that uh, caught my interest. We were talking about respect. Mm -hmm. And I asked how do you develop respect? And you said through understanding. Mm -hmm. Now, understanding is not always that easy. Mm -hmm. Even among people in America, there's communities that don't understand each other. Mm -hmm. Different history, different vocabulary, different food, different everything. Right. And the, the gap between the American community and the Chinese is mm -hmm. in some ways even greater. Mm -hmm. So how do you approach, because you've had to do this, mm -hmm. how do you approach understanding something that you don't understand. You 
just come from zero. How do you do that? With open heart. Mm. Or you say love. Love is a universal language. Once you have that open heart and the love unconditionally, just love, like you love nature, mm. you love people the same. Can you love unconditionally in business? Of course. And that is the core. The all successful businesses, the first in Chinese, there's a four rule. Mm. Like a diamond have a four rule, four C rules in, China. in <laughs> real estate, there's a rule in the yeah. business. There's also, uh, what are I say the four rule, yeah. fa. Uh. So that is the, like a law. You need to understand the business, the core of the business. Mm. And then you have the money, you are well equipped because money is the tool. Mm. And then you have the partnership. Mm. And then you have the location. It could be anywhere. It could be Hawaii. So once you have this four mm. principle, and uh, the next three rule, it's also very important mm. in business, especially doing business with uh, Asia, mm. China. Number one rule is a relationship. Mm. And number two, is a relationship mm. and number three mm. is a relationship mm. the relationship is combined so many there's a trust there's a respect there's understanding there's a love open heart sincerity so many that can be into that relationship yeah yeah i've heard it said that chinese business is based on relationship first and then business negotiation follows mm -hmm. A lot of American business is based on business negotiation, relationship, customer relationship, client, and so on. And from that may develop the personal relationships. So in a way, as in many other things, China and America are mirror images of each other. Mm -hmm. And we are affecting each other, of course. Many young Chinese come here. Mm -hmm. Many young Americans go there. Mm -hmm. So this is going to change, mm -hmm. right, within our lifetimes. How do you see America and China moving forward together? You know, I personally feel the relationship is a little different where we're talking here. The, China, uh, the relationship to Chinese, what, it, what, what does that mean to Chinese? And uh, what does that mean to America? Even that a relationship, even that's just the one word that mm -hmm. I think has a, uh, two different meanings. In, in uh, uh, America, it's a more, uh, to me, it's more mechanical. Mm -hmm. It is the order, it is the, reg you know, all the company has the protocol. Mm -hmm. And uh, they have a systematic uh, as a relationship, right, for the customer. Mm -hmm. But it, in China, the relationship is, uh, uh, how do I describe? It, it's very hard to describe. It's more almost like a family. Yeah. Almost like a family. Yeah. So, for instance, we we um, also I'm on board for the Pacific Royalty. Mm -hmm. Pacific Royalty is uh, based on that relationship and mm -hmm. the trust mm -hmm. and the respect and the understanding and coming with the uh, the business model. Right. So, for instance, in, in before the law, before the customer service, and you know the all the program. Mm -hmm. There's only human relationship. Thinking back in uh, hundreds. So let's bring it to something really useful for our audience. Yeah. And I think probably everybody in this audience would be interested to know mm. how can I effectively do business in China? Of course, I'm interested in having that relationship and mm -hmm. building my business. What is the first step that an American or anyone outside of mainland China should? No, should take, mm. and as an expert in that field, how should how can you begin? Because it seems so difficult sometimes. First of all, be a student. Oh, yeah. For um, American business people, um, when you want to do business with China, go to China and learn mm. and listen and be a good student mm. with. You know, what, what you have learned in America or the world, put it aside oh. and go to China. And uh, So we're not going there to teach them or show them or give them something? Well, you first be a student. Oh. Then you can be a 
the best teacher because knowing yourself, because you already learned so much here in America, but you don't know China. To win-win, business is at both sides. Win. Right. So you need to under, not only understand yourself and the law here, but you need to understand the other set, mm. your partner. So I sense a connection to respect, that word we started with. Yes. Forming right there. If, you, if you're really a good student, mm -hmm. if you're really receptive in learning, yeah. then it's out of a sense of respect, which will be returned. Yes. Right. Yeah. We all love to teach. We all love to share. Mm. So if you are humble, you know, be a student, all Chinese people will love to teach, will love to share. That's, right. our, that's in our custom. We all love to talk. Yes. Not all of us love to listen and we quite li so much. We need to listen. <laughs> yes. yes. And not just with our heads, but with our... With our heart, open heart. Yeah. Yeah. It might seem difficult for some business people who just, you know, I've got my shoes yeah. and I want to go there. They're special shoes and I got the right price and right. they have the right logo and color. I just want to sell my shoes in China and go home. Yes. And I sense that what you're saying is that is not going to work. Well, you know, some, in some cases it would work, but it won't la uh, last. It's, mm. You know, we're talking about the uh, relationship, the, the sustainable, the long-term relationship. Mm. So that's, if you really uh, want to build... And that actually is a pattern. A lot of American businesses get a start in China, but mm. then can't sustain it. Right. And they have to right. pull back. Yes. Even that happened to Uber. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah, it's actually very costly than just, you yeah. know, taking time and patience to learn and to listen. And, uh, yeah. yeah. So how can, we, how can we reach you if we need this type of advice? Well, I'm here. We, we have an office here at the uh, Honolulu, Hawaii. Mm. Um, the number is 808-638-7100, uh, mm. and we, uh, we have people here answer the phone 24-7. Uh, of course, we have uh, mm. uh, eight hours, but... Uh, and there's uh, a website, right? Yeah, there's a website, asiapacificgroup.us. Mm -hmm. And uh, in China, Beijing, if you uh, uh, often visit uh, China, I will be in Beijing, and that number is... Uh, I give you my cell number because I can't remember my landline. Mm. Um, we have uh, a small office, and uh, but it's right in the center of uh, Beijing, Chang'an Avenue, uh, number one, and the number is one three six six one two five eight two two three. Very good. <laughs> so welcome to Beijing. I hope uh, um, you know. Welcome to uh, to visit. Thank you, Xiaofang. We really you. appreciate your insight and sharing your time with us. So Merry Christmas to everybody. It's that season to enjoy family and peace and reflect on what's coming in the new year. Aloha. Aloha. <laughs>